Okay. Good morning, everybody. What a great group of folks. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, uh, I want to thank all the, the, the partners, uh, thought partners, the partners in opera, operationalizing apprenticeships and other forms of work face learning. We have a number of folks up here today, including uh, from the state legislature, Representative Sheila Leader and Representative David Ortiz from the House, and from the Senate, Senator James Coleman and Senator Tom Sullivan. Let's give them a round of applause. They are um, really four of our leaders uh, about thinking about the future of work and how we can make sure that people have access to uh, more effective earn while you learn models, uh, including uh, but not limited to apprenticeships. And we're going to talk about other forms of uh, of workforce uh, models today that uh, we'll be able to enact uh, through this executive action. Uh, I also want to thank from my cabinet, Director of Labor and, uh, and Employment, uh, Joe Barella is with us. Thanks for joining us, Joe. We have uh, from the Department of Personnel and Administration, Tony Girondini. We have the Office of the Future of Work Director, Catherine Keegan. Where's Catherine? Thanks for joining us and helping with this project. Uh, and uh, many others here, uh, including uh, we have superintendents, uh, higher education deans, uh, representatives from unions, and many more. So thank you all for joining us on this exciting day. Uh, this uh, action today will help address the workforce challenges we have within state government. And we've all heard uh, and read, they've been reported on, uh, that the state as an employer is not exempt from the same trends that are affecting many other employers. We're one of the larger employers in the state, 31,000 employees. Uh, and like many uh, companies and organizations and nonprofits and universities in our state, uh, it's difficult to fill all those positions. And fi not filling positions, first of all, uh, threatens our ability to get the work done. It's also, of course, unfair to uh, those who work for us, who often have to cover for more work. Um, and there's even some positions that are on mandatory overtime and have been on mandatory overtime and certainly are desire to move off of that. Um, certainly, uh, optional overtime is valued by many employees, but uh, we do want to get to a place where we don't have to use mandatory overtime. Uh, to do that, we need to do a better job recruiting and retaining great people to work for all of the great career opportunities the state offers. And we have everything from snowplow drivers to prison guards to people who process uh, your taxes uh, to uh, park uh, rangers, you name it. Um, and we know that there's more that we can do and need to do to connect people with good paying jobs. There's two unemployed Coloradans for every open job today. However, there's often a uh, mismatch of the skills. And what we're hoping to do is make sure that we can get a route to for those unemployed Coloradans or underemployed Coloradans to get the skills they need on the job to earn a better living, uh, recognizing that many people can't afford to leave uh, full time to go back to higher ed uh, and not, not work for a period of time because they have expenses. So we want to meet people where they're at. I want to briefly reflect on the progress from our apprenticeship executive order last year. This will build upon that both in apprenticeships and then introduce some new uh, work work based learning opportunities. But we've already expanded the number of registered apprenticeship programs offered by the state. We've submitted 103 new to training programs to the US Department of Labor for formal registration. And uh, we got to honor many businesses that uh, 10 that included 5% or more registered apprentices. So now what today is really about is the next challenge, the next frontier. How do we uh, really lead with an aggressive goal for uh, workforce retention programs and training programs and earn while you learn models? And today's executive order sets a higher goal for Colorado and uh, of course maintains uh, a focus on apprenticeships. They are a gold standard and we know that work-based learning is also a continuum. And that can include things like fellowships, internships. There's a lot of tools that can be used in addition to registered apprenticeships. And this executive order, first and foremost, uh, will make sure that our state agencies will create more apprenticeship programs, but also pursue other work-based learning opportunities, including internships and fellowships, and other creative models. Uh, specifically, uh, what we will do with this executive order is increase the number of registered apprenticeship programs within all the departments of the state of Colorado by 50% by June 30th of 2024. 
We're going to increase the number of registered apprenticeships in the private sector by an additional 100 programs by June 30th of 2024. It's nine months through the technical assistance and support the Department of Labor and the Future of Work Office can provide. We are going to create 10 additional work-based learning uh, programs for classifications with high vacancy or multi-department positions. So again, we're going to focus that effort on areas of the state where we have uh, very high vacancy rates. And we're going to have a targeted effort around recruiting work-based learning uh, candidates in those programs to help fill the immediate workforce need and provide a pipeline uh, to fulfill the need long term. And we're going to direct each department of the state to implement at least two new work-based learning programs by the end of 25. So, uh, and to do all this, we're directing uh, the two agencies here, Department of Personnel and Administration, Tony Girondini, Department of Labor and Employment, Joe Barella, to develop new work-based learning programs that train people for important roles across state government. We're going to prioritize roles where we have significant needs and vacancies, including transportation maintenance, corrections, nursing, teaching, social work, HR, administrative, administrative assistance, and IT. Another important component of the executive order is we direct the Department of Personnel Administration to create a pathway where high school students can begin careers in state government uh, and, and hopefully culminating with a job offer concurrent with their graduation from high school. This will help um, uh, direct uh, the, uh, uh, the talent pipeline between high school students and state government. We want students to earn money right away and build off of their skill set. I'm very excited about apprenticeship and work-based learning opportunities, and we want to lean into that and leading that as a state. And we call upon, of course, companies across Colorado to innovate as well in this area. We signed our last executive order at Google and Boulder around apprenticeships and skills-based learning, skills-based hiring. State has implemented skills-based hiring. Uh, we want to encourage companies in Colorado to innovate and to implement uh, apprenticeships, fellowships, internships, and certainly to avail themselves of the resources we have at the Department of Labor to be able to support that work as they move to do that. And of course, we would never want to ask uh, all of the great private sector companies to do something that we ourselves as a state aren't doing. And that's why with this executive order, we are showing leadership as a state and moving forward and modeling best practices around work-based learning that we fully expect will be a competitive advantage for Colorado. Uh, as we compete uh, with other states, uh, with other countries across the world, we really want to distinguish ourselves on workforce readiness. And a key part of that are work-based learning opportunities that Colorado is a leader and we're going to become an even greater leader in with this action today. This approach will help us connect more Coloradans to available jobs and a pathway to get the skills they need to hold those jobs without giving up their earning potential while they're learning those skills. It'll create a ripple effect that also encourages more private sector employers across Colorado to embrace work-based learning as a real solution to create the workforce they need today to get work done today and create a pathway to the jobs of the future from people from across our state. I personally am very excited by the work ahead I know that Colorado's workforce will be stronger as a result. We'll be able to deliver better value uh, with our taxpayer funds that we have. And I'm excited to make sure that we can deploy those in the most efficient way possible uh, with the best trained candidates for jobs, many of whom can learn on the job through work-based learning opportunities that today's executive action will amplify and provide to an even greater extent. We look forward to our continued partnership with the stakeholders here, including the legislature, unions, agencies, school districts, institutions of higher ed, and more. And with that, I'll sign the executive order. It's official. All right. It's official, and um, we'll happen to take some questions from the, from the media. So many employers across Colorado, including the state of Colorado itself as an employer, have a lot of vacancies, and that gets in the way of our ability to get the work we need to done, uh, whether it's uh, clearing the snow from the roads, whether it's 
protecting our communities. And what we're doing today is really leaning into work-based learning. So this means things like apprenticeships, fellowships, internships, as a way of making sure that people are able to help out today as they learn and get up to speed, in many cases resulting in long-term job offers for those who come up with this training. Um, this is a very exciting model. The state already implements this to, to a certain extent. This will expand that and also really serve as a, as a great symbol of leadership to the private sector to really help grow work-based learning opportunities into a major competitive advantage for the state of Colorado. Governor, uh, you mentioned on the roads, law enforcement, what are some other areas that you're focused on? So the, the, uh, first of all, we are to challenge every single agency of the state, from Department of Agriculture to Department of Regulatory Affairs to implement work-based learning. But we have particular recruitment needs, and therefore a lot of these efforts will be focused in areas including um, HR, administrative, uh, administration, administrative assistant, corrections, transportation maintenance, nursing, and social work. So those are some of the areas where we have the most uh, pronounced issues around vacancies. But there will be benefits to uh, work-based learning across all aspects of what we do as a state. Can you talk about what's causing these vacancies? Yeah, it's not unique to, to the state as an employer, first of all. So uh, th this is across the private sector, again, in, in many roles, uh, including nursing and others. Uh, right now, as a state, we have two job openings for every unemployed person. And uh, what we hope to do is line up opportunities, including work-based learning, for unemployed Coloradans and underemployed Coloradans to get the skills they need to have a professional career while they earn, while they can earn. Um, you know, in terms of what's causing this, this is a macro trend. It means a strong economy. Uh, it means that uh, we have uh, um, a great story of economic growth here in Colorado, and we simply need to make sure that we can innovate on the workforce front to give everybody the opportunity to earn a good living and further power our economic success. Governor, can you talk about any issues of private sector goals in this? Yeah, so this is through technical assistance from the Department of Labor and Employment. So we gave them a specific number. There's a lot of interest from companies, of course, mid-size, large size, but this can also work for, for smaller companies as well to implement apprenticeships, to, inter to implement work-based learning. And what we do through the... Uh, Department of Labor and Employment and Joe Barella is provide the support and help we, they need to structure those programs. There also have been and are opportunities for state funding. Opportunity Now is one that uh, recently went out uh, where we will support uh, uh, innovation from companies that are doing um, work-based learning. We can, we can get you the number. If Joe has it, we can do it. We'll find that for you. Yeah. Statewide, we have over 6,000 apprentices in Colorado. And your question was specifically in state government? Well, I'm just wondering, um, increasing apprentices with meds, what would that bring to Yeah, so we have seven different state agencies that have apprenticeship programs. So we have a lot of opportunity for those that don't have any registered apprenticeship programs to, do, to build those. Uh, so there's 17 cabinet-level agencies that, that we'd be working with to increase that number. The, the, so there's a, a 7 out of 19, which means 12 of 19 don't currently have apprenticeships. They all will, probably starting with, with a few apprentices and then growing from there. But we want to make sure that every agency uh, can feature this. Okay, thank you all for joining us. Thank you to all of our great stakeholders. We're really excited about really plugging people into opportunity, making sure people can earn while they learn, resulting in good professional careers. And many of you uh, and us, we're all excited about the opportunities for the state as an employer so we can provide the services we need to provide. But we're also really excited about modeling this for so many companies that are really interested in facing the same employment issues as the state. Uh, we have St. Vrain Superintendent Don Haddad with us as well. Uh, they've been uh, really a champion of their working with their juniors and seniors in work-based learning. I uh, want to thank CareerWise and Noel Ginsberg. He's out of town and wasn't able to make it today, but another great partner in this work. Uh, but there's a lot of great opportunity ahead. If we do this right, uh, we want to make sure that Colorado distinguishes ourselves in this area. Companies are coming to Colorado and growing here because we want to have the best workforce innovation, including work-based learning in the country, and with your help, we'll get there. Thank you.